Hi, I'm Craig Zuckerman with Lori Clark and Z-Line Fitness, and we're coming to talk to you today about gaming, esports, and how to do esports and do gaming on your computer without killing your body and injuring yourself. Yes, you are a professional athlete when you are in esports, and just like every other professional athlete, you need to do exercises outside of your work itself. You need to do warm-ups, you need to do cool-downs, you need to do stretches, all these things put together to prevent pain and injury injuries while you're doing your sport or while you're just gaming for fun at home. And we're going to show you how to do all of that here today. In fact, we're going to show you the proper ergonomic setup for gaming on a computer to hopefully prevent a lot of those aches and pains that you get, along with stretches and exercises to help get your body toned up and ready to go so you can perform at your sport or just plain old fun gaming at home without killing your body. All right. In fact, you know, let me just give you a little background because I had a client recently that came to me and I've had a lot more who have been coming to me with injuries from playing video games, especially on computers. And, and he came to me with a lot of, of hand pain. His hands were killing him. He couldn't even open his hands up. They would just shake. He could barely stretch them out. He couldn't grip coffee cups. I mean, it was really bad. And he was going to try out for the esports team at his college. So the good news is using all these techniques I'm about to show you, he was able to go two weeks later, try out, and made a full ride scholarship to his school. So this stuff really works out, and it'll really help you out, and I'm going to give you some cost-effective ways to do this too. All right, so let's start out with that first thing that's the problem and with the hands. So watch Lori as she's doing her hands. Now here, here's the big difference. This is not a gaming keyboard. A gaming keyboard, the buttons are much higher, you have a much deeper throw, but because of that, you have to pull your fingers back higher. And that's what caused all of this strain in the hand for him and for many gamers out there. So the first thing you need to do is elevate your hand and arm up higher so you have more of a downward angle to the fingers and they don't have to lift or pull back. If you watch her flex your fingers out, they don't go very high, but now push your fingers down. You can go much more down than you can go up. So we got to help that out by changing that angle. Now, one of the things that do that, you can get those really big pads. They have them for your mouse too and for your keyboard. They have different thicknesses, so you can get a nice height thickness to that to help out your hands. And you, we'll put some links to those on Amazon. But if you don't have that, you can always grab just a paper, uh, not a paper towel. You can grab a washcloth or you can grab a hand towel and because you need to get it high enough to deal with those bigger keys that you're working with so once you get that height you're you're starting on your way to helping out this condition another thing you need to do is stretching and warming that thing up i mean hey here's just a basic warm-up for you to do before you start into gaming flex the hands grip the hands Flex the hands, grip them. So you're spreading them way out and you're gripping them way in, spreading them out and gripping, even just doing some of these rolls. If you do these kind of warm ups before you game, you will help your hand out tremendously. There's also some great stretches we're going to get into too and some other exercises. You're going to roll your wrists around too in both directions. Again, we have this thing called counter muscle balancing, where if you go one way, you always want to go the other. So you balance out your mechanisms of all your joints. Hands are no different on that. If you kind of warm things up beforehand and get them blood flowing, you'll go a long way to helping out your hands and preventing that pain. Now, connected to the hands are the arms, and that's where we get to the next part of our ergonomics. Armrests. Armrests are a very important part of your chair. If you don't have them, I really suggest that you get a chair that does have it. Look, this chair I purposely bought because it's the cheapest thing I could find that had all the adjustments you need. It's like 125 bucks on Amazon. I'll throw a link for that too. Now, I did make some modifications in high tech band aids, um, and I'll show you why we have this here. Yeah, you know, rubber bands. Band-Aids. Well, hopefully you won't need any Band-Aids with hurting yourself or gushing blood. But with these rubber bands, to, to kind of show you that you can do a lot of these adjustments at a low cost, just like I showed you with the washcloth. All right, so armrest. With the armrest, because we're going to be at a greater height with the pad, we also need something that supports the arms up in the air. So that's why you need one that has adjustments. The reason you need this adjustment, most desks are too high for proper ergonomic positioning. So we have to raise the chair up. We have to raise the armrest up and do a bunch of things to be able to hit this height so we have this nice levelness to our wrist with these armrests. And even if your armrests aren't high enough, they do sell pads that go over the armrest to even lift it up higher. But if our armrest is up, 
what it does is it takes the pressure off her neck and off her traps, these big upper trap muscles. If you're walking around looking like a football player, it's probably because you are not doing something to support your arms. If this support isn't there, she literally has to hold her arms up to reach and use the keyboard, and doing that hours on end is going to stress her neck muscles out, give her headaches and all kinds of problems up top. So use those armrests. Cool thing about this chair too, you can do, have these guys that do in and out, so I can have it angled in for keyboard or angled out for the mouse. Also, it goes in and whoops, out and in, so you could scoot into the table and still move it back. Now, that whole scooting in close to the desk has a point to it, because another thing I see on these gamers, which is nuts, and I'll throw some pictures of it up, is this whole turtle head thing going on. Your head's all strained forward, your neck's forward, and you look like a tortoise, and you sit like this a couple hours a day, and you're going to be looking like, you know, Quasimodo all hunched over, and you're only like 25 years old, and we don't want that. You know, we want you standing up tall, looking nice. So with that... This is where this comes into play. Now, I have this is actually a small lumbar support that I put up here for a neck rest, and it's there for tactile feel. So she can just feel her neck touching against it. So she knows if she's in the tortoise position or she's not because she can feel her neck against this rest. So if the, I highly recommend getting something like this. They do have actual <laughs> ones that are designed to sit up here. Make sure your chair has a neck rest to begin with. Problem is, most of these headrests are like way too far back. I don't know, they're like meant for you to be like, yeah, lounging out, taking a nap in your chair. You're not, you're gaming. And you can't be laying back there. So I added in this too. On that note, make sure you tighten up that bolt on the bottom of your chair so it doesn't spring back and forth. So it holds it in a very tight, upright position so you can hold this position. Another thing that causes that tortoise head to happen is you can't see like me and you have to wear glasses, but your screen is too far away from you. Pull your screen closer so you can pull your head back so you're not squinting forward or moving your head forward to see your screen properly. Also, screen height is very important. A lot of these guys, again, I'm going to throw up some pictures of these gamers. The screen's way down here. Their head's forward. They're looking down. That's going to, again, trap this occipital. This is where the spine meets the skull. If this gets locked up from all these tight muscles, because gravity, boom, is what's pushing down her head. These muscles are working constantly in an outstretched position to hold her head up so she doesn't face plant into her, into her keyboard. And that constant tension is going to lock those muscles up into spasms. Now, this doesn't only affect you with headaches and neck pain. It can create numbness and, ting numbness and tingling in your hands and fingers. It can also affect your legs because when the occiput is, when this area is tied up, it affects the entire body. So very critical we get this proper positioning. And with this proper positioning, we want this ear to shoulder ratio that she has with her neck nicely pressed against here. Then I know that that cervical spine is in a C curve and it's aligned properly. To help with the screen, there are these arms that you can get, you know, that clamp onto the screen so you can move it forward, you can move it up and down. Those are amazing. But if you don't have that, hey, just grab some books, throw it under your screen, lift it up, pull the screen closer to you, pull your keyboard closer to you, and that's going to help you out there. So we've locked it in. We've got the pad to help the wrist height so we don't have this little thing that my game that came into me was having really bad. We have the proper arm level heights to make sure that we don't stress our traps and our arms can be in a nice long angle to the keyboard. We have a head rest or more neck rest so you know you can have the proper ergonomics. We are pulling the screen closer so we're not squinting and we have it up at the right height. You knock all these bad boys out and you're going to really be helping out this upper body area. Now there still is the lumbar area. That is the low back. Now on this guy, if you don't mind turning in, I put in an extra little uh, piece of foam. This is actually off like an exercise mat that I just cut. Go ahead and turn back. So I can make sure that it pushed in enough. It needs to support the back. You need to sit against your chair. You need to have that support in your low back so that it dissipates gravity strain on your body. And then your muscles don't have to work so hard to keep you upright. So having proper lumbar support, you can even buy separate lumbar supports to throw in there. And if you're having a gamer bag, you're having that thing that you're going to slide on the bottom. You're going to have a neck rest. You're going to have a lumbar thing. You're going to have all the tools just like a football player has the right cleats, has the right pads to make sure he's not getting hurt when he's on the field. You're going to have that when you go to game. And really importantly at home, because that's where you're spending more of your hours gaming. 
uh, is, is not just in the eSport right when you're there, but when you're practicing with your team. So you need to have this stuff with you and you need to have a way to protect yourself. All right, last thing on this, because we have to raise a lot of the heights of things, we don't want the pressure uh, on the legs. There's a lot of pressure that comes right where the seat hits the leg, and we don't want that pressure. So to prevent that, you may also want to get a foot rest so that you lift the foot up, legs up a little bit, so there's some give under here. You want a little bit of space so that you don't feel all that tension or you're not cutting off the back of your leg. You cut off the back of your leg, your hamstring tightens up, causes low back pain causes swelling in the bottom of the leg, edema. We don't want that. So a good foot rest or, again, some books. Step on some books, phone book. I don't even think we have phone books. Anymore. We know, there aren't even phone books anymore. To lift that height up, that's going to help you out. All right, coming on in here. Now, on to some devices that may help you out with the hand strain. Now, now Lori herself, because of jujitsu, she had a lot of hand problems and her grips were being a problem. So we grabbed one of these cool things from Amazon. So you could do this like and exercise your hands. But not only does it do this, just like the counter muscle balancing we were talking about, you got this cool thing too that you can put your fingers in and stretch your hand out. So now we are working those back muscles. A lot of times the muscles that hurt are hurt because they are trying to do a job they are not strong enough to do. If I had to hold my arm out like this all day to maybe shoot a gun or do something, well, maybe not shoot a gun's a good thing, and shoot a bone arrow, ah, something like that, where this muscle has to work and hold, then I better do exercises that make this shoulder strong so it can maintain that held position for long periods of time. That's what you're doing here, exercising and working out those hands so they can maintain it. Now, when doing these kind of movements with the hands and stuff, you'll see how our forearms are working. All these muscles work a lot, and then these muscles can get tight and strained, and then if these are tight and the muscles start to get little micro tears in them, and you get a lot of pain in your forearms. To prevent that, a good old-fashioned sweatband. All right, so you put the sweatband on. This is a long one. Again, I'll put some links for these things that we got. And it keeps you warm. And by keeping the muscle warm, keeps the blood flow. Blood flow to the muscles prevents spasms in the muscles. And that creates, prevents pain. So that's what you really want. You want to do that? You can also use even a small one. Now, with back to my client with the hurt pain in his hand, what we did to get rid of the acute pain was change the way these ligaments were being pulled. So we had a wristband like that put it over and then i had a little piece of foam i had this thing from who knows what and i just put that under there in the middle of his hand to create some pressure down in the middle of those ligaments that immediately took his pain out while we were rehabbing the rest of him now you may not be able to find this little foam thing and you may not even be having this problem but it is still a good thing in your practice when you're practicing that you use this to keep this area warm uh, and and help out with any strains or inflammation that would be happening it also compresses which is good too to keep too much blood flow and inflammation from happening so those are two great tools you could be using one little side tip if you are using a controller is just that you know, yeah, the guys and the controllers they have down here, so they're not really using the shoulder rest. But depending on just your arm length and how your body is designed, you could still be lifting your shoulders up, creating that trap problem we were talking about, or, or some pain and stress in your shoulders. So I do suggest dropping the armrest down, using the armrest, and then putting a pillow under your hand. And that way, everything is supported and relaxed. And just try it out. You will see that the difference between having that pillow there and your elbow supported, all of a sudden this feels freed up from maneuvering. And then you can have yourself like a cool, like golden pillow to rest your hands on. So yeah, like you're the golden pillow gamer dude. All right. So that's my only real tip for that. That's change up because everything else, all these other ergonomics are the same thing when using the computer. Now, gaming in your house you know, we do have a thing how to properly sit on the couch, another one of our videos, and that's the exact same thing that's going to apply to gaming, except you just put some pillows on the side that your elbows rest on when you're gaming, just like what we were talking about here, and that would help it out. I do have a lot of questions, too, about how to game on the floor. That'll be a separate video showing some tips on what to do sitting on the floor while gaming. It's not the best way to sit and game, but hey, I'll help you out as best I can with that to prevent some pain in your back. All right, so back to what we got at hand. We've got all of our tools. We know how to lift in proper ergonomics here. We have stretching now. Those forearms I was telling you about and those hands get really strained. So we want to do a stretch. 
The stretch we like to do is putting our hands and stretching it out, either with our hand itself or, yes, yeah, like this. And she has to have the soft part of the elbow forward to stretch through that forearm. That's the most important thing. And you're going to hold those stretches. You can lift the body up, keep all this up too. Hold those for 35, 45 seconds. Then you flip it over the other way. Now you're stretching the back of the hands. Now with this same thing, rotate that soft part forward of the elbow. So you open that up, stretch the bicep, stretch that forearm, 35, 45 seconds. So that's your big stretch that you do after you game to stretch out all that work you've done to your forearms. We also have some other exercises that help the upper body and the lower back. Now for your hips, because you're sitting a lot, you can tend to have SI joint problems. And so we have a whole video called How to Relieve Pain While Sitting. And in that video, we'll show you some easy exercises that you can do sitting in a chair that will help secure your SI joint where your hip bones meet your spine to help with low back pain and hip pain you may be having while gaming, sitting for long periods, gaming. And also we have exercises for the upper body and neck. One of those is the chin tuck, which you can see here in this little picture. And the chin tuck's a great way to support and strengthen the upper neck muscles. Yeah, Lori's doing it there. Also, pull outs with the bands. These pull outs work the back shoulder muscles and open you up. Now, you don't want to lift the shoulders while doing this. You want to keep the shoulders down as you pull that band out to the side. Make sure you have it below eye level just in case that band snaps. Now, if you don't have a band, there's exercises like the ski jumper wonderful exercise for posture works your entire back your neck it kind of hits everything at once you know hard to do on the gaming floor beforehand maybe back in the dressing room or something but it's a great thing you can do at home while you're gaming and finally we have the hold up the hold up is a standalone exercises beautiful thing to be doing because it works all those muscles in your back and in your neck helps your posture out helps you stand up straight and helps with those gamer muscles for being you know looking at a computer and working on a computer throughout the day put all that together and you should be really helping yourself stay pain free and be the best of the best at your sport all right so i'm craig zuckerman with Lori clark we are z line fitness helping you feel better look better perform better and game better